and today we're visiting the Kansas City Zoo. First time here, this is going to be cool. We're getting ready to head out to the zoo, and it's a little early. I got about 45 minutes, so I had to stop, get breakfast first at a place that I usually don't get to eat breakfast. I mean, I love this place. So good. And how many other places can you get a burger and tacos first thing in the morning? Breakfast of champions. So I actually had to bring my wife up to Kansas City for some business meetings. She's in these conferences all day and everything. And I had a choice of sitting around the hotel all day or, hey, let's go try something new. So thanks to my patrons for their giving because this is going to make a visit to the Kansas City Zoo possible. First time here, so this will be a lot of fun. I'm gonna come inside and check it out and see everything it's got. First stop, of course, though, is those ticket booths behind me because I gotta buy not just my entry, but also they've got rides and a few other things here, so gotta get the whole package and check everything out. Let's go. 9.30, the zoo opens up. Uh, admission was $16 if you want a regular admission. I paid the 24, which includes all the rides, the tram, the uh, gondola later on, the train and other things. So definitely can ride everything. You can see the polar bear behind me. Really neat exhibit here. And this is gonna be a lot of fun. Pretty zoo so far. It's huge, at least according to the map. So I'm definitely gonna want the tram and the train stuff to get around, but should be fun to see everything we can turn up. So far, Cool today, it's um, mid 40s right now, it's supposed to get up into the low 50s, hence the coat. Yes, that is actually my stepfather's old coat. I do have Dale Drew Jr. on today. <laughs> but you can see the polar bear out, he's probably loving this weather. So let's go see what else we can find. Kind of a neat entrance. Uh, basically, the polar bear exhibit is the entrance. And then from there, you got a couple options for me. I'm taking this nice long path here out to what they call Tiger Trail. And there is orangutans and tigers and other things. They have a train, you can kind of see the tracks there behind me a little bit. I don't think it's running quite yet, but after we do this loop, then we can come back on the train back kind of the opening center, I guess. And then you hop on the train and head off to this other wing of the zoo that's way back that direction. So lots of places to explore, kind of spread out. But it's kind of nice because if you're wanting some space to relax, which in all honesty, my day today, that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. It, it's just really nice that way. So, time to go exploring. Hey, I think I found some relatives here. That kind of looks familiar. I wonder if they're as curious as I am. Looks familiar. <laughs> so you ever feel like people are looking at you like you've got a horn on your head or something? Oh, wait. You do! Oh, isn't that a sweet looking little baby? Good morning. I didn't mean to disturb your nap. Anybody ready for a train ride? This is a small one. Even I'm kind of cramped here and I'm sitting in the front row. Hey, it'll be fun. Take a quick loop around. Fun little ride on the train. I was surprised how fast he went coming downhill at one point. <laughs> he was ripping that thing along. Another spot here, though, if you want to warm up a little bit. It's not a real big reptile house. It's pretty much all snakes in here. But, yeah, you can see they got a couple little critters there. And just a nice little spot. Good place. Again, it's a nice, quiet morning, hey, being a Friday during school. But you can see this is a good place if you just want to sit for a little bit and... You don't mind snakes? This is a good one to come relax. I wonder if we can get lost out here. It's just a path off into the middle of nowhere. And yet, in the middle of nowhere is Australia. Ooh. All we have to do to get to Australia is go through a gate. That's pretty amazing. But instead, I think we're going to go through the birds of Australia. 
free flight aviaries are really cool. And they've got so many birds in here. You can see all sorts of stuff. And Although something tells me that that guy right there isn't really a native of Australia. I think he might be from a different continent entirely. And I am going to be proven wrong. I'm never proven wrong, but in this case I'm wrong. <laughs> cockatiels are from Australia. So cockatiels and cockatoos. So that one, yep, he's native and I missed. <laughs> These are just awfully neat, neat places. I wish more zoos would do this because the birds are just free to do as they please and come and go and you get to walk around and experience them up close. Is that okay with you? Um, don't most zoos usually have a no smoking policy? Uh, okay. <laughs> don't smoke in the zoo and that goes for you too, Pipe. So this is really interesting. There's a sign here for the red kangaroo. You notice there's not an enclosure here. There is, however, another sign right here that says, please stay on the path and don't crowd block or chase the kangaroos. So apparently, they actually allow the kangaroos out to just kind of wander on their own. One of the things I really love so far, look at all those trees and the colors and lots of trees, which most zoos do. But you can see fall is definitely arriving here in the Ozarks, just turning really pretty. So, got a couple friends that want to say hi. Not that most of you have ever seen them before, but you might have worn from stuff from them. <laughs> couple sheep, Australian sheep. So are they heffalumps or woozles? Beware, beware. So what's the best part of the zoo when you're at it on a school field trip? <laughs> the playground, of course. Animals? Who needs animals? Let's go play. It's always fun when you find another touch of Disney in a place that's not Disney. What would that be? Well, <laughs> Hakuna Matata. It's a wonderful phrase. Hakuna Matata. This is actually a really neat area here. It shows you the playground, but you can see the petting zoo with the goats. They're very active, but friendly goats, which is neat. And then you have this discovery barn that's right here. And inside are lemurs and macaws and spider monkeys and several other things. Just kind of a neat exploratory area. And then there's actually another little play area right there. It looks like a giant tree, but very nice, neat little area here. Gotta love the fall colors. So the penguin area is really kind of neat. This is the outdoor pool area. And you can see they've got plenty of room to swim. And there's actually an opening in the pool there, but they've actually got the whole wall opened up right now. So those little guys, if they want to come out, they can come out anytime they want. Or if they want to stay in there, they can do that too. A very nice little exhibit. And lots of little holes for them to hide in. Or they can go up and play at the glass with the guests. It's a little cooler today. So animals may not be visible because of the weather. Just because of the cold. So you don't see that toucan there. He's invisible. He's not out. He's actually hiding because of the cold weather. So you really don't see him. Honest. He's not there. Just pretend that he's disappearing before your eyes. Watch him disappear. Poof, he's gone. Walking through one of the back areas here and Hey, I found a whole maze. This is actually kind of cool. Set up for them. Heading over to several of the other animals, the monkeys and sea lions and other things. And then I'll probably head over to take the tram and take that over to the other side of the zoo. Lots to see. Definitely enjoying the zoo here. 
And when I can get away from all the school kids, hey, it's really nice and quiet. It's just all the kids. <sighs> Here's something I didn't realize, that the tropics are fully enclosed indoors. Wow, and all this time I thought it was just wild. Hey, let's go check it out. So here's what happens when you come inside. Wow, listen to those baboons. I mean, people. <laughs> Very cool, though. So what is it making all that noise? Well, that would be these two. Give me an idea. That is all coming from right there. Yes, those two are just having a ball. While the rest of these poor animals, they're just having to listen to the agents. What do you do when you see yourself in the mirror? He eats his foot. <laughs> what? What is that? Finished up most of that side of the zoo. It's been about two hours or so. And now I'm on the tram waiting for it to head out over to the other side of the zoo. And we'll check out Africa and everything else over there. Have some lunch and the gondola and all sorts of other stuff. So, fun day so far. And hey, if you look close, there's the train. Little chance at you. Bye-bye, train. See you later. Fun little ride on the tram. Nice to be able to come over and not have to walk because it's a pretty long walk. The sad thing is how many people are on the wrong side of the walkway. Clearly marked ropes and signs saying walkway on one side, tram on the other, and oh, how many people were walking in the tramway and we kept having to stop. Hello. Don't be dumb. <laughs> At this point, I'm hungry, so I'm going to go get a bite to eat. Hopefully they got something good, besides burgers. But we'll see. Guess what? <laughs> burgers. They were out of their Gatsby, which could have been fun. And then it's a bacon burger, and you can see there's basically no fixings on it except meat and bacon. So I had a little bit of sauce and some fries and... The refillable bottle I wasn't going to get, but it was $10, and by the time I get two refills, I've broken even on it. So, souvenir bottle is what it is. And then after this, we've got the gondola. Mm. So, lunch wasn't too bad. The fries were really good. Burger was nothing to write home about, but, you know, plain burger. But, hey, we're done. And now it's off to the Skyfly gondola, whatever you want to call it. In any case, we're going to go fly over the zoo and check out this end of it from the air. So when you come off of the sky ride, the station is right through those trees there. You can then take this walkway and you either head that way all the way around the lake, or you come to the left here, the direction I'm going, you can see the rhino and the zebras, and it will be all the way around this way. So we're about to walk a really long loop <laughs> and see everything. This is another one of the enclosed aviaries here. You can see they've got the doors open, so if the birds want to go inside, they can. <laughs> they want to chirp inside and echo, they can. What's really neat about this part of the park in the back is you hop off the gondola, or the boat if you prefer, and it's just much quieter. Not as many people, not as many school groups. It's a slower pace, and so if you're wanting just a quiet, relaxing stroll. I mean, wonderful out here. Again, another look at just some of the natural beauty that's here. There's a small swinging bridge there you can walk over to come over and see the gorillas and 
few other animals. It's this loop that's off of the African area. So if you take the rides, the only way to get over to this part is to walk. And it is a bit of a walk, but you can see really pretty in this part. For all the lack of shade in the other area, there's plenty of it right here, which makes it really pretty right now. I don't know if the gorillas will be out right now because it's a little cold today, but we'll find out because there's all sorts of stuff that's supposed to be over on this little loop, as you can see from right there. So, nice, take a nice slow stroll and enjoy it. That's been probably one of my favorite parts today. Is it's just been a nice, slow, easy stroll and taking my time enjoying everything. So, love that when I can do that at a zoo. Warning leopards, stay on the paths. Why? Well, because apparently the leopard cage actually goes right over the path. So, what happens if you're like walking underneath when the leopard has to do its thing? Ew. And I have actually seen people sprayed by lions at zoos, but this would make it kind of easy for them. Now we'll see if they're even out today. We, oh, yep, there they are. Taking a nice nap. Poor kitty. Okay, here's another little Disney trivia for you. Welcome to the Bomas of Kenya. Boma, hey, that just happens to be the name of the buffet restaurant at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Good food, too. And there's the other half of Hakuna Matata. Goodbye, Pumbaa. Nice showing us your best side. Or he'll come back. Maybe he's looking for Timon. Wow, looks like this park's been abandoned for a long time. I don't think anybody's been here in years. Well, except for the people that were just in front of me. And the people that are right behind me. <laughs> Ooh, abandoned zoo! So this is where the red cap mangabees, a uh, type of monkey, would be if they were out today. Um, as you can see, with that little sign there, that they're not out because, again, it's a little bit cold. But one of the things I think is really neat with their enclosure here is you can see kind of a little door there, and it goes to that tunnel. And guess where? They're probably hiding today, right back there. Kind of neat to be able to see access for them. And these are a couple of my... Favorites. These are animals you normally can't get very close to because they're extremely shy. They're hard to spot in the wild. Disney has a couple of them, but you don't get very close. And so to be able to get this close to these is really cool. These are bongos, by the way. There's the sign if you don't believe me. But neat to be able to see them up close like that. And then, of course, there's also this little critter hiding right there, running back and forth. That's a crown crane. Now, do you know what the difference is between an East African crown crane and a West African crown crane? Some are in East Africa, some are in West Africa. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> the one thing with the Kansas City Zoo, it, I've kind of hinted at it a little bit, but it is big, it is very spread out, and there's a lot of walking between areas. Uh, it's wonderful that they've got the tram and the train and the boat and the gondola, but even so, there are some spots, like if you want to see the gorillas, the only way you're going to be able to see them is to do a good bit of walking. Uh, you can take the gondola over to one side and then turn around and hop on the boat, but you're going to miss a lot. Uh, you know, the little bits I just showed you with the scimitar horned oryx, the gorillas, the cheetahs, um, the leopards, you'll miss all of those if you just do that. And they're all on this big, long walk around the lake in their little safari area. So... If you come to the Kansas City Zoo, be ready to walk. I think by the time I'm all done today, I'm going to have walked almost as much as if I'd been at a Disney park. Yes, it's really that much. So I'm already at like three miles for the day. And I still have about two and a half hours left. Lots of walking. That is one of my favorite animals right there. You can see their attention is captivated because kind of behind me in the trees over there, there's a train of some sort going by but you can see these cheetahs are just out here enjoying the weather they were giving each other a bath just a minute ago big old kitty cats one of the few wild cats that actually purr kind of a neat sign while I'm waiting for the boat you can see a number of English Swahili translations Jumbo, of course we used all the time at um, Bush Gardens and at Animal Kingdom they use it a lot too 
But if you notice, just a little bit down there, about the seventh word down, Hakuna Matata, no problem. So yes, it's actually a real word. It's not just something that Disney made up. <laughs> As we watch the water, there's the hippo. That is actually the most dangerous animal in Africa right there. He looks like a big old gentle thing, but they are mean, very territorial. Um, if you get up near them, they're known to whack boats out of the water, um, drown people. Not an animal you want to mess with. I actually had a friend who uh, was doing some work and staying in Africa for a while, and a whole bunch of them were in the river and just kept them up all night yelling and screaming and singing and everything else. So even though they look large but cute and cuddly, you don't want to cuddle with a hippo. Not a nice animal. Now a rhino on the other hand, even though it looks mean, they're much sweeter. The biggest issue you got there is just the fact that they're so big. But don't play with a hippo. So there is a crocodile. And here's one beef I'm going to have with Animal Kingdom. If you were riding Kilimanjaro Safari at Disney's Animal Kingdom, they're going to point out a whole bunch of crocodiles to you. Notice the nose. Long, slender, the teeth are hanging out. That's a croc. What they point out at Animal Kingdom is crocs are gators. American gators, to be exact. Not crocodiles. They're easy to tell apart. Okay, remember what I said about the East African Crown Crane versus the West African Crown Crane? The one I showed you earlier was the West African Crown Crane. This is the East African Crown Crane. And they're identical. They're, they really are virtually identical, except for the region of Africa that they're from. That's about it. But now you can see. Tell you what, I'll even put a picture up side by side. See if you can see them both that way. So finishing up, it's about 3.30. I was gonna come over to this gift shop, which is on the far side of the park, and alas, it's closed. There's like an hour left until the park closes, the zoo as a whole. But I was really kinda of hoping to be able to go in and pick up a couple things here. I'll just have to do it in the main gift shop. It was open earlier. Okay, I'll give you a little peek inside. There's a little better look for you. But instead, we'll wait for the train to come back and ride back to the other side and then do my shopping over there. Coming off the tram, it's been a good day so far. The sea lions are over there and I guess they're doing a meet and greet. But as for me, I'm kind of heading towards the exit. We've got about an hour left till the zoo closes. And I think I've seen everything. It's been a great day. Nice, low pace, low key, which usually I'm charging towards everything, but this has been really nice for a change to just kind of relax and take it in. It's surprisingly busy today. Um, I heard from somebody that apparently some of the schools are out for conferences or something. So there are a lot of people here, but not so many that's crowded, which has made it really nice. The temperature's been perfect. Um, and really pretty zoo. Uh, so I've got two stops to make before I head out. Um, obviously got to go get my magnet and see what other souvenirs here. And I'll give you a look inside the gift shop so you can kind of get an idea of what there is. And then from there, it's heading back out towards the hotel. So, been a good day. If you do come though, like I said, be prepared to walk a lot. Um, I did manage to see pretty much everything because there weren't crowds, but if it's gonna be a busier day like a weekend, you probably won't get to see everything. But if you do come on a busy day, hit the tram and go to the other side of the zoo first and then come do the main part later when everybody else has moved around. It'll be a little bit better. Well, there's one thing I missed that I wish I'd seen. I didn't get a show schedule, and I guess it was actually in the map, which I didn't look at that closely. They had a bird show here. It's actually indoors near the entrance, and I totally missed it. Well, that was a bummer. In any case, it's time to go shopping, get my souvenirs, and then head out and get dinner. I'm hungry. So here's a look at the main gift shop. You kind of get an idea. Of course, it's October, Halloween time. But let you look at a little bit of the inventory. And one thing that they've got sitting here. Mystery bags. I never really know what are these things. That's why I never buy them. I don't take the chance. 
Seems like if I do, I get stuck with something I don't want, so I just don't. Rocks. Shirts. Litter stuff. Food. And all sorts of other stuff. Time to shop. So I've got my magnets. I've got my brochures. I got my pictures, like hundreds and hundreds of pictures. And I think we're good to go. So been a great day. We really enjoyed it. Hope to be able to come back again. Again, if you do come, be prepared for lots of walking because there is plenty of walking to do. The Kansas City is definitely a very nice zoo. It's one that I really enjoy visiting and I really do hope that I get to come back and visit again. It definitely, it, for me, it was a nice zoo that felt very low pace, low key, and that I very much liked. Um, you know, I've had zoos. You know, if you go back and watch my video of the Dallas Zoo, we were trucking pretty well through that. You know, moving quick, trying to get through. And this was nice to have a cooler day, a lower crowd day, and just to ease along. So, thank you so much to my patrons for their support because their financial support is actually what paid my way in today and paid for the meals. So, this video is completely due to my patrons. So, thank you to them. And hopefully you enjoyed my look at the little day here and had some fun along too. And if you're in the Kansas City area, definitely come by. Thanks so much. And this is normal for our house. <laughs>